In this video, we're going to take a look at income elasticity of demand, which measures the responsiveness of quantity demanded to a change in income. The formula we use for this is the percent change in quantity demanded, and we divide that by the percent change in income. And we use Y for income, not I, because the letter I is used uh, diff in a different um, topic in economics. So let's stick with Y for now, and then anytime you see Y EV, that corresponds to income elasticity of demand. And we have three ranges of income elasticity, less than zero, so any negative value indicates that it's an inferior good, an example of which would be instant noodles. If it's between zero and one, it's a normal good, such as blueberries. And if it's Y EV is greater than one, then it's a luxury good. We can include vacations in that category. Now an inferior good is a good that people consume less of as their income rises, and a normal good and luxury goods are goods that people consume more of as income rises. And we're going to take a look at two examples. The first example we're going to take a look at is instant noodles. Assuming income doubles from a $10,000 to $20,000 salary, and quantity demanded falls from 200 to 100, let's see how this would work out for income elasticity. It results in a minus 50% change in quantity demanded divided by a positive 100% change in income, which gives us a value of minus 0 0.5. To show you how I got there, let me go back a step. So to calculate the percent change in quantity demanded, I take the new quantity demanded and subtract the old one and divide it by the old one. That's what I'm doing up here and multiply it by 100%. Then to calculate the percent change in income, I do the same thing. Take the new income, subtract the old one, divide it by the old one times 100%. And that's how I got through to minus 0 0.5. Now that negative value indicates to me that this is an inferior good, and the 0 0.5 indicates to me that there's a weak relationship. And this value, minus 0 0.5, is between negative 1 and 0, which assures me that it's an inferior good, and also lets me know that the relationship is weak. On the other side, we have the this very colorful tropical vacation, and we can see that when income doubles from 30,000 to 60,000, the quantity demanded of tropical holidays goes up from one to three. And how that works out for income elasticity, let's see on the bottom. Now that's three vacations now are being taken, whereas one was before, so we do three minus one divided by one times 100% for the change in quantity demanded. And then we take a look at the change in income. That's an increase of 60,000 minus 30,000, so that's a positive 30,000 increase divided by 30,000 times 100%. And so our next step further would take us to a positive 200% divided by a positive 100%, which is equal to positive 2. And the value of positive 2 indicates to us, firstly, that this is a normal good. That's what the positive tells us. And the second thing is this large number, which is bigger than 1, tells us this is a luxury good. It has a strong correlation with income. And first we check to see if it's normal or inferior by looking at the sign, and then we look at the strength of the relationship, and here it's quite strong, and that should make sense to you logically, that when income doubles, people are more likely to take uh, more vacations. And in the other case of the noodles, as you can imagine, a lot of college students will consume instant noodles, but as they graduate and make more money, they tend to consume less. So here we have an example of an inferior good and a luxury. And we'll come back to this table to see the values that correspond to those kinds of goods. And we should see that everything matches up as it should. All right, thanks again for watching. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below, and I'll see you in the next one.